In this first week of Black History Month, we bring you the personal story of one of the last remaining Tuskegee Airmen. These men were skilled and courageous pilots who flew bomber support over Europe in World War II. Les Williams, a San Mateo na native, was part of the 332nd Fighter Group, known as the Red Tails. He was also the first African-American bomber pilot. Here is his story. At the height of World War II, a group of highly motivated African-American pilots from the original 99th Fighter Group flew some of the most challenging and daunting missions of the European theater. They were known as the Tuskegee Airmen, and their story is more than just about individual heroism, but rather about men who were able to prevail over discrimination and American prejudice and the Nazi war machine. Except for our uniforms and uh, the fact that we knew we were doing something very helpful to improve our race, we knew that we were going to have to put up with a whole lot of stuff, uh, which we did. And uh, so that was the overall atmosphere throughout the training. 89-year-old Les Williams was one of those young pilots that went through the training in Tuskegee, Alabama. The military was segregated at the time and discrimination was rampant. But the men who wanted to fly somehow endured to earn their wings. It was bad. And uh, they even told us that we weren't all going to be here when the bell rings. And so the training was very difficult. They had us do things I don't think that, had, that every white cadet had to go through. But that was very helpful because it made us really try to be the best. And we told each other we're going to be the best. Les Williams grew up in San Mateo, one of the very few black families in the area. He graduated from high school at 15 and spent a year trying to work as a dancer and as an entertainer before he returned home and graduated from San Mateo Junior College. Eventually, when World War II broke out and Williams, who'd always wanted to fly, was drafted, he spent his time in the Quartermaster Corps, as did most black troops at the time, loading and unloading ships. Luck, talent, and timing intervened, and after he passed a number of tests, the kid from San Mateo was on the train and headed for Tuskegee, Alabama to become a pilot. He was in, however, for a significant culture shock. So the first night was okay. Everything was Afro-American. But the next day, I became under the uh, supervision of white officers, and they were, they were mean. And I think I'm being uh, nice to them. They were mean. And that encompasses everything that you can attach to the word mean. And so from then on, throughout the Cadet Corps, I was, I was the N-word which we heard every day. And no matter how, we had to go through nine months of this, that training involved nine months training. And so uh, we had an awful time with the white officers. They would treat us like slaves. Despite the hardships and the brutal prejudice, the men went on to earn their wings. There were 996 original airmen. They included pilots, bombardiers, and navigators, and more than 10,000 black men and women who served as support personnel. Pilots of the 332nd Fighter Group went on to escort numerous bombing raids. Flying escort for heavy bombers, the Tuskegee Airmen flew more than 15,000 sorties, destroyed over 300 German aircraft, and earned an astonishing 150 flying crosses, awarded for heroism, or extraordinary achievement while participating in an aerial flight. By the end of the war in 1945, the Tuskegee Airmen had lost 66 pilots killed in action or accidents, and another 32 pilots downed and captured POWs. Williams would eventually leave the military as a captain in the Air Corps, return home, and graduate from Stanford University on the GI Bill. He would go on to raise a family and run an extremely successful dance studio in his hometown. Some men never back away from challenges, and Williams returned to college at age 55 and graduated from Stanford Law School to become a practicing attorney. In 1948, President Harry Truman enacted Executive Order Number 9981, directing equality of treatment and opportunity in all of the United States Armed Forces, which in time led to the end of racial segregation in the U.S. military. The lasting legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen and Les Williams is one of heroism and sacrifice for men who earn the right to fly and fight for their own country.